Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Tinashe Mujera, and I'm here to invite you to something truly special. Authentically Woman will be hosting a transformative webinar titled A Journey to Discovering You. This event is more than just a webinar. It's a healing circle where women of faith can come together to explore self-discovery through the lens of our Christian beliefs and teachings. We'll delve into what it means to truly know ourselves, guided by biblical wisdom and the love of our faith community. In these uncertain times, it is easy to lose sight of our true selves. But together, we can find our way back to the heart of who we are, rooted in God's love and purpose for us. This is an opportunity to reflect, to share, and grow in a safe and nurturing environment. I truly believe that when women of faith come together, miracles happen. So join us for an evening of connection, inspiration, and spiritual renewal. Let's embark on this journey of self-discovery together and support one another. And we have something special just for you. We believe in the power of sisterhood and we are offering a special promotion. Bring a sister along and she can join in for free. Yes, I said it, for free. Simply use the code WOMAN777 when you book your tickets on Cricket. But hurry because the offer is limited and sports are filling up. Welcome to Authentically Woman, a sanctuary dedicated to empowering women. We are a faith-based healing circle focused on changing perspectives and inspiring healing through authenticity and vulnerability. Join us in this journey of empowerment and healing. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tenashi Mujera. I'm an author, I'm a marketplace professional, and I'm a woman of God. I am a representation of tested faith. I represent my healed wounds that left ugly scars. This is the Faith in Action podcast that has been created to help you find the journey to your true self through conversations and lessons shared. Hello and welcome everyone to the Faith in Action podcast with me, your host, Tinashe Mujera. As always, I'm excited about today's episode, but before I get into that detail, I would love to invite you guys to a webinar that's coming up on the 18th of September titled A Journey to Discovering You. I hope you all have gotten your tickets. It's only 150 Ladies, you cannot miss this. Just 150 rands and you get to bring a, a sister um, for free. So, I mean, please hop onto that. Um, go into our link, um, Coach Tina link. There's a link there that takes you to Quicket and you're able to get your um, ticket to join a, a journey dis to discovering you um, webinar that is taking place on the 18th of September, 2024. Listen, I'm excited about today's episode and I want to dive into it now before we waste any time because you know how it goes here. Time just runs away from us. I'm excited to introduce um, the podcast episode titled um, Embracing um, Healthy Competition, How Women Can Support and Inspire Each Other. That's the topic of today's um, uh, podcast and it is titled Faith Over Rivalry. And again, we are here with a special guest. Um, I'm excited about this one. An elegant woman of God 
who is doing so much work, such great work on the digital platforms to expand and extend the kingdom of God. Her name is Miss Moss. Um, her name is Mosili, but she's known as Miss Moss. And she's going to be redefining competition with us tonight. I mean, there's a lot of competition that is happening, particularly with women. I don't know why we feel we need to compare ourselves to anybody else, but here's what God told me before we jump into it. He said to me, the fastest way to kill something special is to compare it to something else. And he also said, run your race. You can only win your own race. Amazing. So Ms. Masili, Miss Moth is going to be deep diving into this topic and really unpacking it for us, seeing as she is, you know, one of those people that really is quite influential, particularly in the kingdom of, um, in, in expanding the kingdom of God. Here's her brief. She is um, the founder of Stella the Retreat. She is a God fluencer. She's a Christian woman. Um, and Mosili brings a signature warmth and wisdom, you know, to everything that she does. And she's going to be expanding this topic with us tonight. I'm super excited to welcome her to the Faith in Action podcast. If you all can help me to welcome Miss Moss to the Faith in Action podcast. Miss Moss, you're welcome. Thank you, Tinashe. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here and to partner with you in the work of the gospel. is so exciting. I can't wait to share what God has been whispering to me over the past couple of weeks since you gave me this topic. There's a lot. So, <laughs> as we break this down. <laughs> Amen. Listen, Amen. I love her personality. I just love your personality. Oh. I love, love you. Um, and we're really excited to have you join us tonight on the Faith in Action podcast. Um, just like the title says, it's Faith in Action, all about faith, all about bringing or expanding the kingdom of God um, in truth and vulnerability, but mostly, um, you know, in authenticity. And that is why we have you tonight, because we believe you represent all of that and you are just the right person to be here tonight. And we can't wait to um, glean from your wisdom and get get all that God has been really whispering into your heart, into your spirit, into your um, spiritual ears as well. So welcome, my dear sis. All glory to God. I'm excited. Amen. 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 I'm going to jump into this because you know what happens here is time just flies and we don't know where it's gone. Um, and I'm excited about this topic really and um, re redefining competition. <laughs> Ah, goodness me. I was thinking to myself how, you know, how much competition and, and the spirit of comparison has just become so prevalent, particularly um, with, with, with children of, of, of God and, and how we so compare and we, you know, compare, you know, compare with each other and how this can actually become um, very toxic in that it can turn into jealousy and it, it can turn into us hating each other and, 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 and. I don't want to get into it, but sis, what is your definition of competition, uh, particularly from a Christian point of view? I think competition truly, because I try to think, is there an example of competition in the Bible that ended well? Mm. Um, I think competition is very much a fleshly thing that we have. And it's something that if you think about the competition between Esau and Jacob and how that ended in complete chaos at the end of the day with Esau losing his birthright, um, yeah. or even the competition between Abraham and Lot, and how that led to their their divining one choosing one way and the other another way. I think competition has to do with um, wanting something or wanting to come out on top, right? Mm -hmm. Wanting to be the victor, wanting to be the most recognized or mm -hmm. wanting to be the one who achieves the most. Even mm -hmm. with Cain and Abel, we see this example, right? Where uh, uh, Cain and Abel sacrificed. It was God who said, Abel sacrifice is acceptable, Cain yours is not. But oftentimes when the Bible speaks of competition, it never ends well. So I think in terms of, of kingdom language, I don't think 
the kingdom is about competition, but very much about unity. And Jesus prayed for unity. The prayer that he prays for us, he's, he says, Father, may they be one as we are one. And if you are one with somebody, you cannot compete with them because the purpose is the same. We're pooling and mm -hmm. pooling. So then I'm not going to say I'm pulling a little bit harder than you are. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not going to give myself compare my efforts to yours because at the end of the day, if you if you remember the parable of the talents, we're all given different types of talents. Not only that, given different types of times to put that that talent into effect. And so, if you're now going to compete with me, me having the journey I've had with God, which is probably I can bet top dollar, is very different from your journey with God. And the season I'm in is very different from the season you're in. We're basically comparing apples and oranges. So for me. Competition is not kingdom language. Unity is kingdom language. Um, working together, co-laboring. You know, Paul talks about co-laboring um, the gospel. That that is what is the language of the kingdom. But competition is definitely from the flesh. I've been reminded of because um, here's the thing about competition, right? Where competition learns, envy soon follows, right? And envy follows, divisions will come. And divisions are a fruit of the flesh. Separating yourself from another, um, factions are a fruit of the flesh. So, for me, I don't, I don't find a place where, in godliness, competition can even be healthy. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it is breeding ground for so many other works of the flesh. And if you, if you are driven by that egoic side of your flesh to want to always come up on top, remember what Jesus says. He says in the kingdom, the first will be lost, the last will be first and the first will be lost and the greatest in the kingdom will be the servant. So in fact, it's, it's, to it's, it's toppled over. It's almost like those who compete the least will be the ones who are rewarded the most. Those who don't seek the most glory will be the one who will receive the most glory. So I find that for me, I, I couldn't find a, a godly example of couple. I could only find healthy examples of unity, of working together, of edifying each other, of encouraging each other, of building each other up, even though our purposes may mirror each other, mm. it doesn't mean that it's the same. Because mm. as it clearly says, there is a time for everything, there is a season for everything. And what you may be doing is your business with God. And what I'm doing is my business with God. And overall, we are all contributing to be lights, to be the salt of the earth. And that's the only thing celebrated each other and that's the only thing that um, um, we should actually nurture you know I was mm. even thinking maybe the best way to say competition is we're competing to have our spirit win over our flesh and that is an internal competition with yourself and you you push yourself to be better than you were yesterday that's the only competition that's the only race you are to run right. much like this you know run the race and I love that you with that with that reference that run your own race because mm -hmm. this is your race you're not checking yourself against anybody who's beside you anybody who's in, who who you perceive to be in front of you because so much of our perception of competition um, competition is we think people are ahead but god is not fooled by what may look like somebody is doing something great when in actual maybe their heart is not in it it cheerfully because God loves a cheerful giver, and so you mm. perceive them to be doing better. You look mm. down because that's the that's the flip side of competition is mm. when you glorify others, you dim your light in comparison to the other light, and so now you don't come into the fullness of God's glory in you because you feel like you're not burning as bright as Tina. But all of that is the distraction of the enemy and the and distractions of the flesh. There is no comparison, you know. So that's that's my viewpoint on that is yes. you're not competing against nobody but you tina it's about wow. you wow wow listen 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 you are just wow thank you sis you are just throwing in so many bombs at the same time and i'm receiving and receiving and receiving and i'm i'm hoping that the listeners as well are receiving from you already this is exciting sis thank you i mean so many things you say, dear, our purposes mirror each other. And I love that because one of the words as well, or what God also said to me was that competition and comparison kills purpose and calling. You know, he said that 
and 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 I love that you say our purposes mirror each other. They may mirror each other, but they can never be the same. So mirroring and being the same are two different things. And sometimes I don't think we really understand that, particularly as women. Where do you think this pandemic, because for me, it's a pandemic, the comparison pandemic, the, 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 this, um, you know, wanting to compete is a pandemic. Where do you think it comes from? Who told us, like you said, that giving more or showing up on, you know, having many followers, for example, says, is, um, you know, you making it. Who told you that this is the standard? Is it society? Is it your parents? What is it? Where does the spirit, this pandemic, where does it come from? You know, uh, I love that you said, who told you, right? Because when you said that, I, I went back straight to Genesis three at the fall of man where god says who told you you're naked right it's sin nature it's sin nature that tells you you have to perform others right so even the way the world is set up you know we live in a system of um what do they call it is it metricosity it's like they they reward merit right you're kind of you kind of get social capital for being better than the rest for being richer than the rest for being more eloquent than the rest for just outdoing yourself more than the average human being that's celebrated right so it comes from sin nature to want to be the one who is on top that's why the bible is you know in in our brief notes you cited Philippians 2, 3, that talks about selfish um, ambition, right? So it comes from selfish ambition to want to be the one who's on top, who is getting the most accolades, who's amassing the most wealth. All of that is selfish ambition. And so it comes from sin natures. And so sin nature pervades our families, even in our own homes, like sisters are pitted against sisters by the parents, like your sister gets A's you're getting C's. Don't you want to get A's like your sister? If you're not getting A's, you're not going to, you know, so we're programmed from young to want to compete. And we're mm. told that the more you compete, the harder you push, the better a human being you are, because then you get more acknowledgement from your parents. You get more airtime with them. You see, you see them look at you favorably um, in most cases. So it definitely comes from our sin nature. And that's why I'm saying it's a work of the flesh. It mm. definitely the flesh. Wow. Wow. Amen to that. It is the work of the flesh and it comes from our sin nature. And I love that you say that it has been programmed in us, knowingly or unknowingly, from a young age, where validation and, you know, like you said, it's merit because you got straight A's, because you are this child. But I guess also that speaks to the standard the, that society has also set, and we compare ourselves from that level of standard and bring it to our own um, um, lives. And and yeah. I think you, you're touching a very important uh, uh, topic, sis, because you know this is not unique. I'm, I'm I'm being reminded right now of when the disciples said, "Who is the greatest amongst us?" Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes, 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 because they because they still wanted to be the ones. You know, they want to be the one. On Am I better than Peter? Am I better than Andrew? And it's like, no, nobody's better. Can Nobody. you see that? So, mm. so I love that you say it's programmed in us indeed. And, and, and I mean, the disciples too went through the very same battle. And um, I, I mean, touching on that, how, and going back to women, how and um, how do you think, or what do you think that women can do to parent better, particularly as mothers? Because I think it, it 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 stems more from the mothers. We see it with Esau and Jacob as well. It was the mom. So how do we then, you know, help women? How do we, what wisdom can you give women in terms of parenting and embracing children um, or raising them up uniquely and not comparing them and not using merit and not using this validation on them to say, because you've done this, then you are better. Or even, um, you know, resenting a child because there's something that they didn't do well to an extent that the child feels like they're not part of the family. And the only time they feel part of the family is when they've done something that is perceived or deemed to be good by society. First and foremost, listen, parenting is challenging, Tina. I don't know. like It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's like, God, give me the answer. God, give me the answer. Um, but definitely prayer. Prayer carries <laughs> And I've been going through a journey with my daughter where now she's transitioning out of toddlerhood into childhood. Mm -hmm. 
So it comes with a bit of friction, you know, that transition. Mm -hmm. And I've been asking God to teach me how to parent her. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important to get guidance from the creator of our children, because you must remember, each of them comes carrying a purpose. And so it's important for us to consult the purpose giver, how to raise this child who carries the purpose he's given. You know, that plan that he had for them when they were still in our, in our wombs, right? We, we need to remember that those scriptures not only apply to us, that he knew my daughter in my womb, knew exactly who she was, and therefore he knows what I ought to be doing. And so I consulted prayer, I'm like, I'm challenged, God. I don't know what to do, but I want to raise my daughter according to how you want me to raise it or raise her. And I promise you, he always gives me the answer. Um, sh the short answer maybe to that is ask yourself how God parents you, because God parents us. He's the father. Ask yourself how God parents you and do your best to mirror that in your in your parenting relationship. I think if you realize that your journey with God is not in any way comparing you to anybody, right? It's mm -hmm. always with you and your personal victory, what you're overcoming the science face and the challenges you're facing. Also, think about your children that way, is whatever is happening with the older one is not going to be what's happening with the younger one. And so I need to learn and, and start to reward her victory, not in with her sister's victory but her victory in learning new things and engaging with them at different levels depending on what they need in that time because I am myself I'm an only child but went into a blended family and got a stepbrother but even kids who grew up in the same home are uniquely different we are so different and no one of us is the same and so I think consulting God in how to deal with each one consulting scripture scripture has a wealth of wisdom with regards to just understanding children and raising children and mm -hmm. also just growing yourself in knowledge i'm reading a book right now called the conscious parent and it's really helping me to recognize how special my daughter is how unique she is and to respect that as you know an individual a, an individual mm -hmm. spirit that's come into this world that i have been blessed enough to nurture you know and not oppress because i find mm -hmm. that it, it, there's an easy line we can cross in parenting where we oppress the children almost mm. to break their spirit instead of nurturing their spirit and fla fanning the flame of their personhood. And so my advice would be pray to God and ask God for guidance, consult the word. And mm -hmm. I, I know because I've experienced it that God will tell you what to do um, mm -hmm. with a child, no matter how many you may have, even if there's five of them, they're all on That's five true. Needs. And so you have to tailor make your parenting five different times, which sounds like a headache. Wow. But that is yeah. what you are, you know, tasked to do because you gave birth five times. You didn't give birth once. Okay. Yeah. You, you gave <laughs> five times. And it was all di those pregnancies were different. Okay. That breastfeeding journey was different. Everything was yeah. different at that point. And the person that God knew in your womb those five times was different each time. And so how you deal with them and what you how you how you raise them also needs to be unique to them. Just like God also is unique in the way that he interacts with us as his, his children. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, sis. That is beautiful. That is deep wisdom. Ask yourself how God parents you that you may be able to parent your own children. I hope to all the ladies and men that are parents that are listening to the Faith in Action podcast tonight that you are hearing this for yourselves because this validation and this type of raising children or programming them into you get a reward because you've done good, you get this merit because you've done good, is creating that comparison spirit and this competition that they have to deal with when they are older. Now, since we didn't get that naturing and this wisdom, we are receiving this now. To, to 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 pass it on to our children and we're like oh my god i didn't know let me make a not i'm gonna do better tomorrow you know listen i've been doing it wrong all this while i i didn't know that um i have to look at god and see how he parents me that i can parent but we never received that naturing all that is instilled in us was that um you know toxic uh almost like toxic parenting um, or toxic naturing, like you were saying, um, and, and we were just programmed into certain behaviors and, and certain things. And what it does or what it's done is it's created deep insecurity and inferiority 
that is on the inside that has been embedded such that I think sometimes when people want to run away or almost not compare, they find themselves defaulting to comparison, defaulting to competition, defaulting to thinking that she's got it better, he's got it better, why not me? I don't want to be in this place. And we are losing the essence of who we are and the deep anchoring of what our purposes are supposed to be. How can you help us? What do you have as wisdom to share? I, I shared this with you, you know, before we started about, I think one needs to first recognize how unique we are. You know, God created us all so unique mm -hmm. in a way where comparing each other is just missing out on our own splendor. You know, the Bible says we are wonderfully and beautifully made, fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you look even to the evidence of our anatomy, right, there's like what, seven, seven, almost eight billion of us right now on the planet. Mm -hmm. But each one of us has unique fingerprints. Nobody has the same mm -hmm. fingerprints right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has the same combination of eyes and nose and mouth as you do. And so mm -hmm. I think God has already shown us in the way that he's created us that there is no duplicate. There's no mm -hmm. count. There's only mm -hmm. Tina. There's only Miss Moss. There's only Nell. All right. Mm -hmm. And so if you start to understand that I am unique beyond that, you know, you, you see twins, identical twins yeah. who at that point, they have the same face. Some have the same fingerprint. But even they, they have different experiences in the world and different viewpoints of the world. And so no one person is the same. And if you start to revere how special that is, then you start to realize that how I show up can never be compared to anybody else. How I do can never be compared to, how, to anybody else. Everything about me is unique. And here's the thing, especially when we are in service or in ministry, we are being informed by the same Holy Spirit, right? So mm -hmm. some, some things about us will be the same, but my reach, Tina, will never be your reach. There are mm -hmm. people that you can speak to because they have a similar path as you, that you will speak a better language to their hearing than I can ever even try to do right and so if you really start to dwell on how special god has made you that you are unique completely and your journey your background nobody has it even kids in the same household do not have the same experience of life right and start to understand that then equips you to bring something different to the table right I'm reminded this week I was going through a devotion series on my on my page and the, the topic is never too much. And the first one I did was you are never underqualified. And mm -hmm. God calls Moses, right, calls him out of the burning bush. And he's saying, listen, I've heard the cries of the uh, of the Israelites and how they're getting oppressed by the Egyptians. I want to send you. Right. And Moses is giving all these excuses. I'm not eloquent. Um, I don't know how to speak. They won't mm -hmm. believe. And God says to him, I will give you the word that you must speak. So here comes the here comes the, the 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 great advice I think the Holy Spirit has given me pertaining to comparison is you cannot compare God. Right? Because what you have, what you're expressing, the talent you are using comes from him. It's not from you. And so it comes from you being humble enough to understand that I am because God is. It is not me. Who, who speaks the way I speak. It is God who gives me the word. It is God who yeah. gives me the creativity. So you always pull from a place of gratitude to say, thank you, God, for giving me this talent. You don't own it as your own because the problem with owning it as your own is when it flops or when it doesn't perform the way that you wanted it to perform, then you start self-blaming and self-loathing because you didn't do great. And ha -da 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 -da. But if you understand that everything that you are, the talents you have come from God, then who are you to compare God to God? You know, he thrives in different ways in different seasons in all of us. So I think understanding your uniqueness, mm. that absolutely nobody like you on the planet at any given time. Actually, mm. not just on the planet, in the history of time, mm. ever since Adam and Eve, there's never been another Adam, there's never been mm. another Eve that you bring what God has brought you to bring, and that can never be compared to anybody else across time, across age across platform across anything 
Nobody can do what you do the way that you do because at the end of the day, it is a gifting from God. You don't own it. All right. I remember what he said to Jeremiah. He said that I will look over my word to fulfill it. He's the one who looks over the word that allows you to do the work that you do. So if you take, if you give glory to God, yeah, mm. then you won't compare yourself because you don't sure. want the glory to be yours. So Amen. give glory to God so you don't compare yourself to the glory that is shining in other people. That's all I, I think. Oh, my word. It's oh, not, go on and on, sis. <laughs> <laughs> you have to the whole night. Yes. All like, day. <laughs> you must bring over. <laughs> Oh, my word. I love, love this. Miss Moss, you're a powerhouse. Shoo. The wisdom you carry is, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that beautiful answer. Oh, my God. I mean, I think it, what, it, what it was just saying to me is, hey, you are a vessel. You are a vessel. You are nothing else but a vessel. You are here on command. You are here yeah. on command. You are on yeah. duty. I've sent you forth to bring forth my purpose, nothing about you. So I think we we almost want to make it about ourselves and that's where we miss we miss it. Amen. Sure, Amen. That's where I we mean, miss it. That's where we miss it. Mm. Goodness gracious. Mm. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to the Faith in Action podcast, there is the wisdom we've been waiting for tonight. And this is all the more reason for you to come through to the journey, to, a journey to discovering you webinar because we're going to be unpacking all of those jams it's all about you and finding your unique purpose your unique fitting in the world because if you think about it if if one doesn't then walk in the path that they've been ordained to walk in sis hmm. what happens you leave a gap what happens to that mandate if miss moss is not going to preach to us each morning because that's her mandate. If mm -hmm. she's not going to continue with the work and the and the word that God impresses on our heart, mm -hmm. what happens to a people that are waiting for that word that particular morning? You're reminding me. I don't of, think we ever yeah. think of that. Yes. yes no, you're reminding me because one of the the other sermons I delivered was Paul's letter to Timothy. And he was saying to him that he must keep on doing the work so that he may not just save himself, but also save his hearers, right? So if you don't, if you don't step up into the place of your calling, there are hearers who are not hearing you, therefore are not being saved. And I think that's what mm -hmm. we can downplay and not understand what the work we do does. There's somebody who needs to hear something come out of your mouth. <laughs> you specifically, not anybody else. There's somebody who needs to hear something come out of your mouth because of your story that maybe they resonate with and seeing you. You know, the Bible talks about we overcome by the word of our testimony, right? So you sharing your testimony and speaking up where God has called you to speak or, or working and serving where God has called you to serve or doing what God has called you to do. There's somebody who needs to hear the, the testimony come through you specifically, you know? God was so adamant with Moses because there comes a time where when he's calling Moses, his, the Lord's anger gets kindled against Moses because Moses is trying to give all the excuses why it shouldn't be him. It's like, they're eloquent. They won't believe in me. Who am I to stand before Pharaoh? And God gets annoyed. He's like, why are you like this? But even so, he says, your brother Aaron will assist you. So he's saying, Moses, I'm not giving up on you because I wanted to be you. There's something I've deposited in you specifically because you god would have abandoned moses and just went with aaron because aaron could do it so well right he could do it in his sleep but god wanted moses to be part and parcel of that call so definitely there's something in you and it has to be you in the time that you are with the background that you have where you've been what you overcome has great value for people who will hear you so if you don't speak if you don't speak wow. then how are you going to save wow. you and how are you going to save wow. you Oh, wow. Amen. Jeez, goodness me. Amen. I'm receiving for myself. I don't know about you all, but I'm here to, to hear for myself, to learn <laughs> and to be transformed. So thank you so much, sis, for that. I mean, speaking of purpose, Miss Moss, 
And and I think it's we know that it's a question that keeps being asked every single time. I get people asking me, so then how do I find this purpose? What is it? Mm-hmm. You know, um, what would be your wisdom? What are your words in terms of those that are trying to find their deep sense of purpose, their core, their grounding, what God has said that they are? How does one find that? You know, if you ever read the book of Ecclesiastes, he talks about how everything is meaningless. The work that we do is meaningless. The relationships we have is meaningless. The riches we amass is meaningless. He basically says everything under the sun is meaningless. But he ends it by saying, and I want to read it because I think it's important to read it. Mm -hmm. He ends it by saying something so profound, which for me has always been a, a, how it, what informed what I understand to be purpose, right? Mm. Um, so it's Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He says in verse 13, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, right? Then Jesus comes and he, he, he re basically summarizes the law when they ask him, what is the greatest commandment? And he says, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. But the other one is like this one, love your neighbor as yourself. That is our purpose. Okay? That's our purpose. The world has tried to distract us in thinking that our purpose is, I must be a millionaire by 30, Mm -hmm. or I must be a best-selling author. Do you see the competition coming in, in the definition of purpose? So now the world has, and purpose is competition, outdoing, doing better than competing has become a synonym for purpose. But truly our purpose, and here's the, 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 the most amazing thing about the purpose that we have in the Lord. No matter what you do with your life, you can fulfill your purpose, which is to obey the commandments of God, mm. to love God, and to love mm. your neighbor. This is why the Bible will say, seek first the kingdom and the mm. rest of the so as you seek the kingdom and you are loving, you're loving God, you're loving your neighbor, it will come to you what your, your life's work will be. Not you going out of the way to compete your way into purpose and think that's your purpose. Meantime, you're lacking in your true purpose, which everything else, Ecclesiastes says, is meaningless. It is meaningless you being a best-selling author. It is meaningless you being a millionaire if you are not obeying God as you do. Right, so your ultimate purpose is obedience, your ultimate purpose is loving your neighbor and loving. And if you're a stay at home mom, you are achieving your purpose. If you are working a nine to five, you're achieving your purpose. If you're becoming a millionaire to the glory of God, you're achieving your purpose. If you're becoming a best selling author to the glory of God, you're achieving your purpose. But the key ingredient to give meaning to your life is obedience and walking the journey that God has called you to walk. That's all. Amen. It's simple for kingdom people. And we don't need to feel like we have to go according to the programming of the world to compete mm-hmm. our way into purpose. No, yes. our purpose is to love. That's all we're here for. That's Amen. what God is for. To walk with him in the cool of the day. That's, that's mm-hmm. all he did with Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. To walk with mm-hmm. him in the cool of the day. So as mm-hmm. you're endeavoring to achieve these things, don't forget God. Don't mm-hmm. compromise. God. Don't be a man by any means necessary and think that you're achieving your purpose. Where is the love of your brother? Where is the love of God in having pure dealings to get to that state? But instead you're playing, you're doing fraud. My brother, my son. No, 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 no. You're losing the point. The purpose is to be obedient. That has been my, how I've come to learn my purpose is to be obedient to God. Sure. Amen. Amen to this goodness. It almost feels like this is a journey from without to within. It's almost like a transition from the outside appearance to saying, God, mirror me to me from the inside. I want to know the deep essence of who I am here and not out here. And 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 I think the the, you know, because like he's saying that it's not about you know what you can show or rather acceptance what people what you can use to get people to accept you but rather 
what you can do to get God to accept you. And that is the work of obedience. Oh, my Amen. word. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Thank you so much, sis, for that beautiful wisdom. Now, what then is victory and success um, in your world or rather to a Christian person or a child of God? And, and how is it different from the world? Victory is going to heaven, honey. <laughs> I mean, let's go to heaven, okay? That's the victory that we're all striving towards. That to me is victory. Being counted as a child and a saint, being counted yes. as, an, as an heir with Christ, having my treasures yes. brought up to heaven by the power of God until the Ooh. coming of that's victory to me, okay? So for me, I wake up every day successful because it's already done. What did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished. That is victory. And I promise you, if you change your perspective to that and you set your eyes on things above, hey, what is waiting for you in the Lord in heaven, if you set your eye on that, that's victory. So no matter what you gain or lose, whether the business starts and it fails, whether the child is dropping out of school or not, like all these things that worry us in the material world become what Ecclesiastes says, meaningless, because we are already victors. We are already conquerors through Christ Jesus. So for me, that's victory. And that's why a comparison has no claim, because we've already won. We've already won. Christ has already done it for us. So that's victory to me. You know, also another victory, because you must remember, the Bible says we are called into a ministry of reconciliation, right? And so we have work to do as servants of the Lord here on earth. Victory is doing the work. Victory mm. is contributing with your life energy into being a light and a salt into the world. And what I love about this is this, it's as simple as being an interceder and praying for people. As simple as spreading the word, how you know best. And here's the best and, and most effective way of evangelizing is living a godly life. That's victory. If you're able to live a godly life, that is victory. Because then people, you are a walking testimony. People are able to see that something is different about this Tina. And I like what she said. What's different about Tina? How you carry yourself in the workplace in a godly manner. And here's the thing, because competition also comes from in self-righteousness, right? Where you may feel like, okay, now I'm doing everything. I'm godly. I'm better than everybody. Don't turn into a Pharisee because you are godly by God's grace. Because the only godly is by the grace of God. It's not by anything you bring to the table. The Bible says your righteousness is like filthy rags. And so in your being godly, don't put yourself on a pedestal. But also when you stumble, ah, don't forget what the Bible says about you can approach the throne of mercy with confidence so you can be helped because we receive mercy in our time of need, the writer of Hebrews says. So you do the best that you can and Jesus really will do the rest. So your victory is following God, running your race. When you fall, a righteous man falls seven times, gets up eight, get up again, run the race in you. That is your victory. What we're doing in the journey of walking and striving towards heaven, whether we will see Jesus ascend on the clouds or we will wait in, 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 in the grave as we wait for him to raise us up again, your victory is that you are in the fold. The victory is you are a child of God. The victory is you are a saint. You are a co -a -a chosen. Sorry, holy priesthood. Yes, that's your victory. And that's how now you're able to tap into that place in yourself where you can rejoice in all things, pray Jesus. without teasing, give thanks in all circumstances because you realize that it's done. It's done. I have the victory. You know, I may wake up. It's not a day. It's tough, but I have the victory. That's yes. okay the past six months knowing that i have the victory and yes it's tough yes the spirit and the flesh they fight sometimes tear us apart but god puts us back together again ah because he buys food. Amen. listen the fact that you are strong in christ striving learning your lesson overcoming sin making sure that you're doing the best that you can to uphold godliness that's victory and because of Jesus, we will see the ultimate 
which is the glory of God. So that to me, Tina, all of that, just that goodness of the Lord being manifest in my life, the Holy Spirit who is making me willing to want to do what is good, yielding yes. fruits of me. So my whole existence is victorious. Come on, because I am a new creation. Come so, on, I have already Jesus. won. So definitely, that, that to me is victory. Says I don't know about you. What's victory to you? Wow. Amen. You've said it, my sis. You yeah. have said it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm receiving as well, right? Yeah. You're speaking to my spirit. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me as well. Mm. It is done. It's that mm. victory. Yeah. And it carries us. Yes. It carries us. You know what? Amen. You know what? Our works are but a fruit of the victory right mm -hmm. so what we do what we're doing here now what you do in your spare time the works that we do in raising our children they are but a fruit of that victory but we don't do it it's like what the bible says we do not do we do not do works to gain grace but grace mm. is a free gift right so we already have it but as an outpouring of our faith then we have works so even when you are struggling because you know in ministry you struggle as well some days you're just not feeling your best even when you're struggling you're still victorious just do what you can with the resources that you have because no matter what you do it's rigged babe oh it's rigged oh you've already oh. won you've already won listen listen, uh, listen. <laughs> So then if the followers wow. are not following, it's okay. You've already won. If the business wow. is not taking off as you hoped it would, it's okay. You've already won. You understand? Mm -hmm. Add your situation here. You've already won. What we amass in this life is but a fruit of that. It's not the main event. The main event is already done on the cross, my friend. Please. 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 Please and thank oh. you. Mm. Oh. Mm. Okay, the Bible yeah. excites. Sorry, I got very hyped. The Bible. The Bible. I love it. I love your energy. I love that because I'd be jumping right now if not for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the feeling. That's <laughs> <as> my sister. <laughs> I love it. Thank yeah. you for thank you for sharing that wisdom. You see, I, I told you about time. Now, I want to talk about healing, and for you to touch a little bit on that and how people can, how we can get a deep healing from the inside, how God can mend those broken pieces in us and put them together, how he can take those scars and those wounds and put ointment on them and say, you are enough, you are okay. We can do this, embrace you. Because a lot of some of these issues that we're talking about, I believe come from a place of deep seated hurt, deep rejection for self. Yeah. Hence you're looking for it somewhere else or in others. Mm -hmm. um, rejection from parents. Rejection maybe from friends you associate with because you feel you don't fit in. And so we live in this facade. We live in this life that is not real. We're living, but we're not real. How do we get to that place? Because I believe that once that is also anchored or sorted out, some of these fruits start flowing out automatically. Um, so how do we get, particularly as women, says, to a place of being whole, surrendering to him, to allow him to pour ointment, put betadine on those broken pieces or broken places and wounds that are still oozing of person of, you know, that are still bleeding and, and so damaged that they really need God to do a work. So we are so blessed as children of God because we have the Holy Spirit right and he functions both as a comforter and as a teacher mm -hmm. and jesus even said about him speaking about his coming that he would teach us greater things than jesus even taught us and so i think it's so important to give the holy spirit space to teach you 
and he's gentle so he's not going to force it on you right you kind of need to open yourself up to the leadership of the spirit and one thing about the spirit once the spirit starts to lead you is it will expose what needs remedy in you but you need to get to a point where you are honest with yourself and honest with the spirit right he's a safe space if you're struggling with envy you need to say okay i'm struggling with envy um i have fits of rage uh you know you need to you need to come into the awareness of the problem because they'll even tell you in in if you take somebody to rehab if they don't acknowledge that they need to be in rehab you're wasting your time right so you need to acknowledge that i have a heart issue there's something off in here and the thing you do is take it to god in prayer god i have an issue i realize that i have i'll use envy as an example i'm envious of mm -hmm. the person i i want what they have i'm coveting what they have and i know this is not of the spirit and i want you to help me to uproot it out of myself mm -hmm. um there's great healing in the presence of god and when we really ask him for prayer and i think it's so it's so amazing that he says we must approach the the throne with confidence right so that we may be met with uh, what does it say so we may be so we may um receive help in our time of need so we need to take our needs to the throne that's where you take it you take it to the father you say father here's my need here's my deficit here's my butt here's my heart issue what do i do with this then you get all up in this work all right because he's given us the tools in here on how to deal with some of these things i'm a big fan of if you have a heart issue study what the word says about that heart issue because god went through the effort over thousands of years to compute this for us so read about your heart issue see examples of what it results in the signs and symptoms of envy you know where what were the instances where envy was prevalent in the word how does god say deal with it and also the holy spirit here's the thing he's working in the background okay he's working it in you to Amen. will and to want to do the good will of god so it's not all on you Amen. right and that's why we we can never boast when we're righteous because it was not solely mm -hmm. our work we simply partnered with the holy spirit to have ourselves be transformed in mind and in heart where there used to be a heart of stone now there's a heart of flesh where there used to be a carnal mind now is a godly mind that mm -hmm. is the work so you have to take it to him and you know what it's 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 very try it try it for a week where when you feel the the feeling or whatever the heart issue come along you take it to god in prayer i promise you the hold on you just loses grip there's a there's a spiritual thing that happens that we don't have full sight of but there's a spiritual mm -hmm. thing that happens that truly transforms you such that one day you'll wake up and envy is god in like yes. no man Amen. The feel is no longer here anymore. That's Amen. the being in the Lord. So definitely take it to the Lord. Take it to the throne with confidence. Here's the problem. Amen. Sometimes having a heart issue can leave you in shame such that you don't even take it to the throne. All right? Amen. But you try to hide it. But be Amen. like David. Don't hide your heart, your heart issue. Mm -hmm. Take it to God confidently and say, "You are the only one who can deliver me. You're the only one who can help me. Here's my issue." And as often as you need to take it, take it. The problem is sometimes when the because you must remember, sanctification is a process, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer to to take it out of you. But because you've been falling and you are getting up and you're falling, yeah. you lose pain of yourself. But God, even today, I was driving home and He said to me. Remember, I am a long-suffering God, and my love for you is steadfast. And the Bible even says that God is delaying the coming back of Jesus because He does not desire us to perish. Which means, with every shining day, He's giving you another chance. He's giving you another an extension of time for you to work it, to partner with the Holy Spirit. It brought me to tears to even think about that. That Jesus has not come back because He does not desire me to perish, but He's giving me a chance. Day in and day out to get up back again, learn from yesterday's mistake, try a different approach, try to work with the Holy Spirit, change my mindset. Do you understand what I'm saying? It sure. is, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to be in the Lord because of this mere fact that if you keep trying, my God, 
if you keep trying. That's all he wants. Is you keep sure. working, working it out of you. And before you know it, you'll be waking up like, who's this girl in the mirror? <laughs> 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 that I, like. I like what she's about. I like what she's doing. Hey, Nancy. Hey, yes. Sure. So, in parting, good goodness, I, I just love, I just love you, woman of God. I just love you. Listen, yeah. sis, the last question, because of time, owning our stories. I think some people feel so much shame and guilt in owning our stories. And so we say, ish, but man is like this. And that already is comparison. That already is rivalry. That already is competition. Without you even being maybe jealous or envy or other things, just saying, hey, my story, hey, but she's better. And false humility. How do we get to break that, to break that? to break that shame and that guilt, that condemnation that the enemy wants to bring on people because of the things they've gone through, because of the sins they've committed, because of the issues that they have had in life or things that have happened in their own lives. And they are, they are they're struggling to own and embrace their story. So God is on a journey with me with Shay, right? And... He, he revealed it to me in one of the sermons I delivered that those who were forgiven little, love little. But those who were forgiven much, love much. And so he's saying, the more I forgive, the more you have capacity to love me, right? And so even if you're comparing your sin and you're like, it's greater than most, know that that means my capacity to love God is greater than most, one. Second of all, Paul speaks about this. I'm actually going to preach about this after this. So I yeah. love that we're going into my sermon after this. All right. Yeah. So Paul in First Timothy, um, in verse six, in, in verse uh, fifteen, he says, "The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received." see for this reason that in me as the foremost Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life all right so when you're looking at your sin like yo, oh, such a big skeleton hi i can't let people know about this but that is a demonstration that jesus christ might display his perfect patience as an example for those who were believe in him for eternal life your shame is misplaced your shame is actually the thing that will have people believe in eternal life because if jesus could save somebody like you if he could save you with your big big monster skin huh and other people who have their own big big monster skeleton hear about your deliverance then they will come to believe in eternal life so stop stop cowering about your testimony paul was a murderer he killed christians Jesus. up and down overly zealous as a pharisee mm. but he says mm. me as a foremost of sinners i've mm. been brought to christ so jesus could demonstrate his perfect patience that he has for all of us you know the sermon i'm about to preach literally when i drop off from here the title is you are never too wrong you are never too wrong you are never too far gone the bible said his hand is not too short to save right so no matter what it may be david was a murderer liar adulterer solomon was promiscuous gent you know mm. Rahab, let's not even talk about her she was a prostitute we can come we look through the genealogy of christ which i think god is so humorous for doing this if you look at the the genealogy of christ ratchet okay True. all the people that came from ratchet folk do you understand what i'm saying they needed the lord they needed jesus that's why he came through them that's what i'm saying True. We all need Jesus. We all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, all of us, all of us. But because of his great love, he sent his one and only begotten son. Mm -hmm. that we oh. 
perish but have eternal life. So don't you allow the accuser to keep accusing you into inactivity, into shame that cripples you. The work of the Lord, rise, arise, arise. I, I preached a sermon a week ago that said, arise from the consequences of your sin, arise. Because God has forgiven you and his hand is not too short to save. He can forgive. Yeah, that very thing that you're thinking, right? He can forgive it. He has forgiven it because there's nothing new under the sun. He's been there. He has experience with addiction. He has experience with porn addiction. He has experience with fornication. He has experience with forgiving murder. He has experience. He has experience. He's a professional God. And he can clean you. Though your sins are red as crimson. Ah! He will my wash God. them as white as snow. And I'm a living testimony, Heidi, because one thing about my skeleton. But he did it. And he continues to do it. And that's the beauty of being in Christ, is just knowing that he will forgive it. He says, if you're faithful to confess your sin, I will forgive it. So live a life of confession. I saw a, a video that was so powerful this morning that says Christians, the word Christians equals repentance. We are a repentant people, right? We're not a perfect people. We are a repentant people. So Thank God. you repent, for as long as you can open your mouth and say, Lord, beat your chest like text collector though the pharisee was speaking with pride saying thank you god i'm not like this text collector the text collector beat his chest and said lord forgive me for i'm a sinner the bible says he couldn't even raise his eyes to heaven because of his shame for as long as you can beat your chest and say god i'm a sinner. he's faithful to forgive you that's our god that's just how good he is his love and mercy follow you all the days of your life come on how many scriptures do i need to quote to you yes, to reassure lord. Goodness of your father he loves you that much keep coming back oh prodigal oh. yeah run come back again yeah, right. okay come back because god wants you that's all he wants he just wants to walk with you in the cool of the day and if you keep coming back you'll find the help that you need hey. woman of god yeah 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 that's god woman that's of his... god mm -hmm. sis Please close off this podcast in prayer for us, if you don't yeah. mind. All and right. um, you can tell the people where to find you, your pages and and. But I just sense that there's somebody listening, watching, that just needs a, a prayer, that just needs a touch of God, that just yeah. got something from this word. There is an atmosphere that's been stirred mm -hmm. up. And I just want to thank you, woman of God, if you can just close for us in prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord for this time of fellowship around your word, oh God. We are grateful that today you reaffirmed your love for us in such a big way. Father, the world has taught us to compete, to compare ourselves, but you remind us today that we are unique. You've made us wonderful. You've made us fearfully. You've made us beautiful all in our own unique ways. Father, the enemy has corrupted our self-image, that Father, we can only see ourselves in comparison to others. But we are grateful, O oh God, that today you have taught us that, Father, we're running our own races, that, Father, you are the only reward we push towards and nothing else. Everything else is meaningless, O oh God, only serving you. Obeying you is what matters. Father, may we never forget this word. We know that sometimes we hear the word with excitement, but the enemy comes to steal it. Father, fortify the seed in our hearts and may it grow roots that will breed fruit. Fruit, some 60-fold, some 30-fold, some 100-fold, oh God, that we may walk life in peace with you, in peace with others. Because we know that, Father God, comparison can add seeds of disunity and just factions and divisions within ourselves and the relationships that we have. But Father, we thank you that you've given us the awareness today to know that our paths as unique as our fingerprints, that what you've called us to do, Father, is only a call for us uniquely, and that, Father, you ask us to do it so that the hearer of our words and even ourselves may be saved. Father, I speak against the spirit of shame that I know that most comparisons come from shame because we don't feel like we enough. We don't feel like we're good enough. We don't feel like we have enough to offer. But Father, what we offer is from you. And Father, every good and perfect gift comes from you, O oh God. And so may we walk in the awareness that the gifts that we have in themselves are perfect because they come from 
you, O perfect and holy one. We thank you, O God, for Tina in this ministry. We pray that, Father, you may increase her territory and that messages like these may reach the hearers who need to hear it. And those who are listening, Father, we pray that you may remind them of this word in the time where envy creeps up in the time where the spirit of comparison creeps up, which is also the voice of the accuser, because he enjoys to tell us that we're not enough, that we don't belong, that we're not worthy. But Father, you say we are worthy. You call us a holy priesthood. You call us co-heirs with Christ. You call us saints, oh God. And above all else, we are your children. Father, may we never forget it. Because in knowing that then, Father, we know we've already won. We have the victory in and the victory is in Christ, who died and rose again for our sake. We thank you, O great brother, for what you did. We thank you, O Jesus, for what you continue to do. Because even now you work on our behalf. You advocate for us with the Father. And we thank you that, Father, your grace is lavished on us. That, Father, as we struggle through life, through the war of the spirit of the flesh, we walk not alone, but you walk with us, Holy Spirit, teaching us what we need to hear, comforting us where we need comfort. Because some of the scars in us is what needs your comfort, O God, to heal the spirit of comparison in us and so father we relent ourselves to you we say work on us holy spirit transform us holy spirit in heart and in mind that we may align ourselves with the perfect will of god the perfect will of decree that is to love you and to love our neighbor that is our purpose that is our calling to walk on always in the in the light of your love and shine the same glory into the world being lights being the salt help us father god we know the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour but father he will not prevail because you are with us as you were with jeremiah to deliver us and we thank you father for you've made us you made us a fortified city you've made us an iron pillar with this message and i pray that whichever ears may hear it that father god word may bear fruit in their heart in their lives all the days of their lives in christ's name i pray amen 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 wow woman of god thank you thank you for gracing us oh thank you for your wisdom thank you for being obedient to the spirit of god may god really also expand your your territory may he continue to pour wisdom in you that we may continue to receive this that we need may you become that vessel that is fortified and anchored and sis may you never go backwards you will not go backwards the enemy will not catch you unaware he will never we pray that you are anchored we pray that you are covered ah that nothing will touch you because we want you to be a pure vessel that receives for our sake. And we just thank you, woman of God. God bless you for honoring this platform. I don't take it for granted. You've got another sermon to rush to right now. It's all work and all work of the kingdom. It's all energy. It, you, it requires a lot. And, and, and really, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Where can people get a hold of you as we say goodbye? It's been an absolute pleasure. I had the best time, so much fun. You know, as Jesus girls, we just like talking about our father. So I'm very, I'm very happy to have contributed in this way. You can find me on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, on YouTube at Miss underscore Moss P. At Miss underscore Moss P on all the platforms. I'm about to go now live on Instagram and deliver the sermon for this evening. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Thank you so much to all the Faith in Action podcast listeners. It's been an absolute, absolute, absolute a beautiful um, podcast session that we've had with Miss Morse. And I'm thankful to God for the work that he has done. Follow her on our platform so that you can glean more of this wisdom. So many sermons that I've also listened to that have transformed my life. And we are truly grateful that she was able to come through. So sis, have a great night and we'll catch you on the other side. All right. Next thing for us is to say bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tenashi Mujera. I'm an author. I'm a marketplace professional, and I'm a woman of God. I am a representation of tested faith. I represent my healed wounds that left ugly scars. This is the Faith in Action podcast that has been created to help you find the journey to your true self through conversations and lessons shared.